I started off 2022 in a huge way. I got this big comic book haul to show off to you guys and I even got a slab. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. I got this huge comic book haul I'm gonna show off to you guys. I even got a slab, I'm gonna save that one for the end. Uh, but I started off 2022 in a big way because I'm very, very excited to show off the books that I was able to pick up. But before I get into the haul, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. Uh, but let us get into the books I picked up here. I got a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, went a little bit crazy, but hey, you know, you gotta start off the year right. But I was up in Northern California visiting family for New Year's, so I couldn't help myself. Every time I'm up there, I gotta go visit, you know, all my favorite shops. And uh, there was a lot of really, really cool stuff, especially this first book here that I am very, very excited to share with you guys. Uh, the first book I was able to pick up for myself is actually Fantastic Four, Annual Number Six, First Appearance of a Nihilist. Now, this is a book that I have never had owned this one. I've never had this one in the collection. Uh, and I am very, very thrilled to now add it because, you know, this is one that has absolutely been getting super, super hot in the market. Uh, one of the things about this one that's really interesting is I was able to get this one in a back bin for half price. So I scored this for $45. Now, don't get too excited because as you can see right here, there are a couple holes in the cover. It's pretty beat up. You know, I probably call this a 2.0 grade. Feels like somebody, you know, with high heels stepped on this book at some point, you know, way back in the past. So, you know, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely been well loved. It's been well read, but at the same time for $45, I think that that's a great pickup uh, for a book like this. And, and I got to say that this one was really funny because as I was flipping through the bins, you know, I was going through that FF section and, you know, you, when you get to like the back of the bin, you get to the annuals and you never expect to see this book actually just sitting right there in the bin. I, I I think this is one of the most like shocked I've ever been actually just looking through books and coming across something like I, I mean I've seen some big keys and stuff like that but just this sitting in a back bin in an LCS was definitely a shock so I am very very happy to have picked this one up a lot of people you know like Annihilus a lot of people think that you know he could be a villain that eventually comes into the MCU uh, I definitely think that that's a possibility although Annihilus feels like a Fantastic Four number two type of villain you know I don't think that they're going to start with him so I feel like a book like that is you know quite a few years away from really, really hitting its potential ceiling. All right, the next book I got right here is one that I haven't had in my collection, and I'm actually glad that I was able to score this one uh, before, you know, this, this year starts rolling. But this one right here is Defenders number four, first appearance of Valkyrie, or at least the Barbara Norris version of Valkyrie, because Valkyrie technically, in some ways, you could argue made her first appearance in Avengers uh, number 83, but it was Enchantress in disguise. And then there was that incredible Hulk book where Enchantress turns some random person into Valkyrie. But this right here is technically Valkyrie's, you know, first true appearance, although later on in the Defenders run, like number 108 or number 109, Brunhilde actually takes back over her body. So maybe that's her true first appearance. But regardless, however you slice it, this seems to be the book that the market values the most. So I was happy to pick this one up. And, you know, Tessa Thompson, as we know, plays Valkyrie in the MCU. They actually, I think, recently confirmed that she was the Brunhilde version of Valkyrie, which makes this character right here the one that she's representing on the screen. And I feel like this book has a lot of potential. I mean, I definitely feel like this one is a low-key, undervalued key. It feels like Tessa Thompson is a huge actress that they want to do more with. There's already rumors that she might be getting her own sort of Disney Plus show. She's going to return in Thor Love and Thunder. I could have probably added this book to the books to spec on, you know, my 2020 video that I released uh, a few days ago. I probably should have added that one in the Thor one, but hey, the video was already super long, so you know I had to make cuts somewhere. But Defenders number four, definitely a great book, I think will go up in value uh, over the course of the year. All right, this next one here is a very cool one. This is one just, you know, kind of for the PC, but this is Incredible Hulk number 105, First appearance of The Missing Link, but really it's just sort of that beautiful cover with The Incredible Hulk. Uh, they did the Immortal Hulk cover swipe with the Al Ewing run that came out, you know, uh, a couple years back. But I absolutely love this thing. And it's really funny because I actually did a claim sale on the channel here and I had a copy of this and I sold it. And, you know, I'm, I was happy to move a lot of like the books I did. Like for me, it's like, you know, you're, you're moving it on for someone else to, you know, appreciate them. Uh, but of all the books I sold, uh, this one, you know, a couple days later, 
later, I, I start to get that feeling where I was like, oh man, I actually really, really like that book. I wish I didn't let it go. Uh, so I always kind of thought, or I was thinking to myself, you know, if I come across it again, I'm definitely going to want to pick it up or pull the trigger on one. And uh, sure enough, you know, when I was out hunting, I, I finally found this one. And uh, I was like, I, I just got it. I got to add it back to the PC. But this is a beautiful copy. This is probably like a VF or so. So I was really happy to find this one. I got it for 80. Uh, I got the Defenders book for, for 45. So, you know, pretty good deals overall, if you ask me. All right, this next book here is one that I think is really interesting to talk about. I'm probably going to have to make another video about this because there's a lot of things I want to talk about with this book regarding the value of it. Uh, but I had made a video talking about buying the dips. And one of the books I made mention of was this one right here, Avengers number 196. This is, of course, the first appearance of Taskmaster, as you can see right there from the label. I got this one for $100. It's a really nice copy. It's probably like a 9.2, maybe a 9.4, you know, maybe with a press, maybe you can get it all the way up to a 9.6. So a really nice copy overall. And for $100 to me, that felt like a good pickup in my opinion. This is a book that has really, you know, fallen off the cliff, so to speak. I mean, not only is this you know, less valuable than it was at the height of the Black Widow movie. But this is a book that, you know, is actually less valuable than it was, say, even before we ever got Black Widow, which makes no sense to me as far as a Taskmaster fan is concerned. I mean, if this, if people were willing to buy this thing for a certain dollar amount, even before we knew Taskmaster was going to be in Black Widow, just because Taskmaster was like the female version of the character doesn't make this book any less valuable. I mean, this is still a great character character within context to comic books. So I really think that this book, ironically, is actually undervalued. Uh, so I was really, really happy to come across this thing. I think that this is a great book to own, regardless of what's happening in the MCU with the character. I know a lot of people are probably like really upset about the female portrayal of the Taskmaster. That's really fine. I can understand why you would feel that way. But I really do believe that, you know, we're going to get the Taskmaster again. There's nothing to suggest that they won't eventually do the Masters version of Taskmaster. So, you know, you never really know with that thing. I actually think now is a pretty good time to buy a book like that, especially since it's on such a huge dip. All right, the next book I got right here is one that I got a little bit for spec, but also is really for the PC. But this one here is Submariner 35, and maybe you could call this book sort of the prototype of the Defenders. Now, I, I know that Submariner 34 is also really the prototype of the Defenders, but this book right here and Submariner number 34, generally speaking, I feel like set the landscape for the storyline to actually have the Defenders Marvel feature number one come to fruition. And uh, this book right here has been one that has definitely started to get really hot in the market. I was able to find this one for $12, which was a great price, in my opinion, knowing what it goes for on eBay. And I think that this one is kind of interesting with regards to Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. There's currently a toy leak that is calling a certain Doctor Strange variant Defender Strange. And I don't really know what that means. I don't really know what that suggests, but maybe it's possible that when we get Multiverse of Madness, that's gonna sort of lay the foundation or plant the seeds of Doctor Strange being a leader of a Defenders-like team. Like maybe they're gonna set the stage for Doctor Strange number three to eventually do the Defenders storyline. And I actually would love to see that. Uh, that's been my prediction for quite some time that Doctor Strange number three will eventually be a Defenders team. And when that happens, I think this book right here, Submariner number 34 and Marvel feature number one will definitely pick up in the market. All right, this next book I got is one that I think is really, really cool. I've talked about this a few times for spec on the channel before, but this one right here is Thor number 140. First appearance of character known as the Growing Man. Now, for those who don't know, Growing Man is sort of like Kang the Conqueror's main lackey, or at least uh, Kang has utilized Growing Man many times in comic books. And I actually like him as a potential spec to maybe show up in Ant-Man. I mean, we're going into the quantum media. We have a lot of technology with shrinking and growing. It would just make a lot of sense that if they want to pull from Kang's comic book storyline, like he might have a henchman like the Growing Man utilizing like the Pym particles or whatever to go against a character like this. So I really like this uh, book for spec. It's also just a great Thor book in my opinion. Got this one for $12, so not a bad price if you ask me. All right, this next book is one that has definitely gotten hot recently in the market. Speaking of Ant-Man and the Quantumania, this of course is Incredible Hulk number 156, first appearance of a character known as Krylar, who is a Micronaut character, but apparently right now the rumor is that Bill Murray, who has been confirmed to be cast in Ant-Man 3, is going to be playing that character, Krylar, who makes his first appearance in this book right here. And this is a total random character. I actually think he only has one for, one appearance in all of Marvel comic books, and this is the one. So this book got super hot in the market. So when I was flipping in that Incredible Hulk section past this one, I decided that, hey, why not? Let me pick it up. 
right, the next couple books I'll talk about uh, together because they're from the same run. Uh, but these books right here are Spider-Man number three and Spider-Man number five. Now let's talk about Spider-Man number three first. This right here is the first appearance of a villain character known as the Brothers Grimm. Uh, I think this character actually ends up dying and then later on in the Brothers game make their appearance in some other form. But regardless, the Brothers Grimm is a villain that is like a B-tier villain within context to Marvel comic books. Uh, what I think is really interesting is that Brothers Grimm is currently being used in a board game known as Marvel Champions. So I like to speculate on, you know, transmedia things when other characters are being used in other properties. I put value on their, their comic book stock. So I found this one for $4, decided to pick it up. Similarly with this one, this is actually one that I talked about in a spec video with uh, the defects. And this right here is the first full appearance of Morgan Le Fay uh, in the, you know, post golden age. Again, Morgan Le Fay, a wizard character who has a lot of interactions with the Black Knight, who's got a lot of dealings with Merlin and things like that. Uh, so I feel like, you know, as the MCU starts to do more Black Knight storylines, maybe they're gonna have like the mythos of King Arthur and Merlin. And if they do that, uh, Morgan Le Fay is a really important character to that foundation of like the Ebony Blade and things like that. So I really like this book as a nice little spec. Got this one for $4, so definitely worth picking up in my opinion. All right, this next book right here is a really cool one that. I, I'm going to have to talk about this one in a spec book video eventually, uh, but this one here is New Mutants number 29. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the first appearance of the character known as Strong Guy. And if you guys remember uh, that X Factor team, the one written by Peter David that came out in the 70s, you had uh, Multiple Man, you had Polaris, you had Havoc, you had Wolfsbane, and the other giant, big, strong character was the character known as Strong Guy. And he made his appearance right here in New Mutants number 29. So I really like like this book for spec. I mean, who really knows what's going to happen with the mutants in the MCU? Who really knows if we're ever going to get an X Factor? But this is a book right here I feel like you can find in those back bins for super cheap. And, uh, you know, if they ever decide to bring Strong Guy into the MCU, I feel like this is a book that's going to, you know, definitely have a huge spike in the market. So I personally like that one for spec. All right, this next one here is one that I also sort of got for spec, although, you know, don't get me wrong, this is a spec that probably will never come to fruition, but I picked it up because I like it because I think these comic books are kind of stupid and awesome at the same time. Uh, but this right here is Marvel Team Up number 19, uh, featuring Spider-Man and Kazar. And what is the significance of this? Well, this of course is the first appearance of a character known as Stegron. Yeah, you see that dinosaur character right there. Stegron actually has a lot of comic book interactions with the lizard. So of course, you know, I'm gonna think that Stegron is pretty cool. Uh, so I decided, hey, why not? Let me pick up this random character's first appearance. I think that this is a pretty cool book. A lot of people talking about, you know, Kazar or Kazar, however you wanna say it, uh, as being a potential like sleeper character to show up in the MCU. Uh, Bri, Bri talked about it in our video series Series where we talked about undervalued keys. So I actually think, you know, maybe some of those random characters like Stegron, I mean, you never really know. They're only memes until they're not. All right, this next book here I talked about in my starting a collection on $100 budget video. This right here is War Machine number one. Found this one for $4. I really like this book. I think that when we get Armor Wars next year, this will definitely have a spike in the market. Uh, I think it's a great cover. It's a great book. This next one here, Guardians of the Galaxy number 12. First appearance of Phi Lavelle as Martyr, who is the current moniker in which she operates. Uh, I really like this book. You know, a lot of people speculating on Phi Lavelle to make her way into the MCU at some point. Those Captain Marvel books uh, have gotten really hot. There's some other books like in the Annihilation run where she becomes Quasar that I think are also really hot. Found this one right here, she becomes Martyr. So I think all the Phi Lavelle books, I think are really good specs in my opinion. So I decided to pick that one up. All right, in the last few books I'll show off right here before I show the slab. Uh, this right here is Avengers number 12. This is when Iron Man has that Infinity Gauntlet, a nice, great, uh, you know, moment from Endgame. Of course, this one right here, X-Men number uh, 24, that just classic cover of Rogue and Gambit kissing. And then this one right here, X-Men number 184. This is the first appearance of Forge. I found all these books for like, you know, five, six dollars or so. So these were great pickups in my opinion. Uh, you know, I like to have books like this where I can do like a bunch of giveaways to people because I think that they're really cool books and you know, I'm not trying to like make a, a ton of money on those things. So to me, it's just great to have books like this in the PC so that I can give them to you guys eventually when I do giveaways. Uh, all right, well, let's talk about the last book that I found for myself. This, of course, is a slab right here. Uh, and the slab that I was able to pick up is a New Avengers number seven at a 9.6 grade. Uh, but this, of course, is the first appearance of the Illuminati. Found this one for a hundred bucks. So I thought that that was a really, really good price. Uh, this LCS I was in had a lot of like, you know, 
cheaper slabs just kind of in the back. And I was flipping through things and I found this one. And of course, I've been talking about Illuminati a lot recently. You guys saw my video maybe the other day talking about the rumors of the Illuminati. So I felt like $100, which already is a lot cheaper than the FMV on this book, already is a lot cheaper than what you would be able to find on eBay. I feel like, of course, if we get the Illuminati in Doctor Strange, this is a great book to invest in. So I decided to pick it up and uh, you know maybe I'll move on with it uh, once we get to the middle of the summer when we get Doctor Strange if those Illuminati rumors come true. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. That was my comic book haul. The two key books for me uh, that I was really happy to find was A First Appearance of Taskmaster and this right here, Fantastic Four, Annual Number Six, First Appearance of Annihilus. Two books I, I didn't have in the collection and now I'm really happy I did. So 2022 is off to a great start. Anyways, drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Let me know if you guys picked up anything this week and I'll see you in the next video.